what is going on everybody welcome to my channel Rooster's what ifs and today we'll be continuing the series of what if naruto was a genius of hard work this is part three of that series so be sure to hit that like button and make sure you hit that red subscribe button and without further ado let's begin trial by fire Naruto had fought many dangerous men in his short shinobi career. Some had obviously been more dangerous than the others. He had fought bandits and wandering ronin on some of his earlier missions, and he had even killed a few small-time missing men on some of the, his B-rank missions with Team Raido. None of them compared to the might of the Iowa squad that had appeared out, out of nowhere in the middle of river country. Originally, Naruto had thought the three-man squad arrogant when they squandered the element of surprise in favor of pointless posturing. Much to the boys' growing distress, the Iwanin had the abilities to back up their boldness in spades. Some time in between, when earthen spikes burst from the ground, forcing Team Rider to dodge lest they be fried by the ensuing electric current, and when the redhead men with the Zambito rushed in and delivered a debilitating strike with the flat end of his Zambato that immediately removed Hayate from the fight, Naruto realized that he and his team were way in over their heads. Iwa formed their squads differently than Konoha, opting to pack more power in a smaller group. Standard formation dictated that each squad was made up of two Chunin and one Jonin. In theory, it would allow the squad to move more quickly, while having enough power to compensate for the lack of a fourth member. Naruto had learned all that from a history text detailing the Third Great War. He had also learned that Iowa designated certain squads as kill squads that were designated to be able to eliminate high level targets efficiently and impunity. Given the way that the three handled themselves, the carnage behind him in the formerly spiraling hamlet, and the ease with which the short man had dispatched Hayate, a seasoned tuning in his own right led Naruto to believe that they had indeed stumbled upon an Iowa kill squad. All that flashed through Naruto's head at a speed of thought, barely registering in the boy's mind before being discarded, as he scrambled to intercept the redhead shinobi who was moving to finish Hayate. Two kunai were pumped as Naruto's focus increased to the insane levels as he slipped into Shanshin. The blonde Chunin immediately felt the strain on his body from the jutsu as he reappeared in front of the short Iwanin. The twin knives were brought to bear in a hasty overhead block that halted the cleaver in its tracks. Naruto's arm shook under the weight of the man's Zambuto as he attempted to deliver the cook the grace and the Chunin gritted his teeth. Feeling his twin kunai slipping, Naruto channeled the remaining chakra from his shanshin into his legs. Digging his heels into the ground, feeling a rush of air behind him, he almost sighed in relief as Hayate's body was whisked away by Genma. He was out of the kill zone. Enacting a quick kawarimi with a nearby piece of debris, Naruto grimaced in pain. He'd be feeling the strain on his chakra coils in the morning. If I get out alive, that is. Seeing Genma moving to engage the redhead Joni, Naruto assumed he was a Joni. Naruto's eyes shifted to where Raido was exchanging blows with the other two Iwanin. Seeing that Scar Chunin created a small amount of space between himself and the stone in, Naruto enacted a carefully orchestrated maneuver. Naruto had trained with Team Raido in a series of basic, simple teamwork maneuvers, maneuvers that were trained extensively maneuvers that were trained extensively so that each team member not only was ready for them at a moment's notice, but also expected them. Teams like the Densetsu no Sani and the Inoshika Cho trio had been famous for their complicated, sophisticated and deadly combos. In the case of Team Raido, there was nothing complicated and nothing sophisticated, but it was deadly. It was illustrated beautifully when Naruto reached out with his chakra and Kaorimi with a rapid retreating Raido. The two approaching Chunin were entirely unprepared to meet a shorter, smaller and very offensive-minded Naruto. Konoha's reputation for deadly team had gained credence as Naruto swiftly outmaneuvered one of the unprepared Iowa Nin and worked his way behind him. The blonde slammed one of his kunai into the base of the man's neck, severing, his, severing the spine with a grunt of satisfaction. The entire altercation took less than two seconds. 
pushing the rapidly cooling corpse into the second tuning, Naruto dropped back and summoned a sushi punch to distract the second shinobi. Leaping into the air, the blonde landed on a nearby roof where he, where he was quickly joined by Genma, the latter having been replaced by Raido, who was engaging the Iwa Jonin. Eyes sweeping over the battlefield, Naruto addressed the Chunin, who was without his customary sandbot. My clone won't hold for long. What's happening? Hayata's looking bad, Genma said in a rush. Two of his ribs punctured his left lung. Damn, Naruto grimaced. We'll have to do this fast then. I'll take point and you flank. The lazy Chunin shook his head. Negative. Raido can't handle the Chunin for long. I'm going to drop in for support. This one's yours. He finished, gesturing to the Iwan Nin who just dispatched Naruto's sushi punching. You gotta be kidding me. Naruto nodded once. Kitly understood. There was no time for arguments on a battlefield, especially with a comrade injured. Only quick decision and execution. The blonde knew what was expected of him. As Jenma disappeared in a burst of chakra to support the beleaguered, beleaguered rider, Naruto pulled a scroll from one of his pockets on his flag vest. A short burst of chakra and a swipe of blood later, Naruto held a folding Fuma Shokin in his hands. Naruto snapped the weapon into place before hurling the bladed weapon at the now charging Chunin. He immediately wove a set of hand seals before leaping to the ground and moving to meet his enemy halfway. Seeing the shuriken coming in at a neck level, the Iowa Chunin ducked under it. His eyes widened as he blanched and performed the impressive acrobatic cockscrew to avoid the shuriken that had been in the shadow of the first. Noticing Naruto's charge and reacting quickly, the Iowa Nin withdrew three kunai and explosive tags and chunked them at the charging blonde to buy himself some time. Cursing, Naruto quickly substituted with one of the thrown shuriken, appearing behind the Iowa Nin, grimacing in pain. It was a strain to cover me with a moving object. Naruto palmed six shuriken, three in each hand, and he sent them racing toward the Iowa Chunin. The man, recognizing an attempt to maneuver him, withdrew a kunai and deftly deflected the inbound throwing stars. Hurling his own kunai, the man dropped to one knee, weaving hands sealed before slamming his palms to the ground. Doten, Doryosu, the man intoned fiercely. Damn, Naruto cursed. His dodging of the man's kunai had placed him in a prime position to f his dodging of the man's kunai had placed him in a prime position for the follow-up ninjutsu. As earth and spikes burst from the ground to impale him, Naruto did only one thing available to him to avoid a painful death. He jumped. In the world of Shinobi, jumping into the air while in a defensive position was almost suicidal. The reason being that if a competent enemy had you on the defensive, Placing yourself in a position where you couldn't completely control your body movement, the air, was simply asking to be killed. The same held true here, as his enemy leapt to follow him. His truth, throwing a kunai from his rapidly deflating weapons pouch, Naruto deflected the Iwa Nin's steps to the best of his ability. The blonde grunted in pain as he took a few shots to the chest, with only his flag vest save him from taking any potential mortal wounds. Falling rapidly and with death approaching, Naruto used all of his strength to kick out at the Iowa Chuni, and he managed to push him off. The blunt flipped through a set of hands as he fell away from the men, and the thick mist began to blanket the area, obscuring the Iowa Nin's view of Naruto as the blunt hit the ground hard. Feeling his internal chakra fluctuate for a split second, the Iowa Chuni landed in a crouch, his hands forming a ram seal. He stopped his chakra flow with a muttered Kai and the mist dispersed to reveal a charging Naruto, kunai in hand. The knives met with a resounding clang that reverberated through the area in the two combatants' arms. Withdrawing briefly, the two chunin met once more, blades generating sparks as metal met metal. Dropping back briefly, the hour shinobi allowed for Naruto to make a charge once more before using his longer reach and superior strength to bat away the knife and get inside the boy's guard. Stabbing him through the neck, momentary triumph was short-lived. However, as his body crumbled into mud, quick thinking, th quick thinking saved his head, and Naruto cast silently as his step at the man's back was avoided by a desperate roll. The Chunin had great reflexes. Dropping back and making some space to catch his breath, Naruto assessed his opponent. The man was larger and stronger than him, and undoubtedly more had more chakra. In a battle of attrition, the Iwanin would have him beaten soundly. 
Assessing himself briefly, he noted that he had more than half of his chakra and a plan began taking shape. This is gonna hurt. One hand seal later, a charging Suji Banshin was sprinting towards the hour tuning. Watching this passionately as Fu Kunai perforated the crumbling clone, Naruto wore the few hand seals for one of the few ninjutsu he used regularly. Taking a breath, Naruto expelled a high speed compacted bullet of water at the Iwan Inn. The sword and Tebo Dama wasn't the quickest ninjutsu, but it was fast enough to force Naruto's enemy to move rather than block. Focus sharpening to a pinpoint control chakra and by long hours of training came into effect as Naruto slipped into a shanshin once more. Despite the pain that Naruto knew he would be feeling, the high speed technique allowed him to get close to still dodging Iwachuni. Naruto's personal brand of taijutsu relied on grappling, trapping and lightning fast strikes that were too fast to react to. It requires speed to steal the initiative at a close range, and speed was something Naruto had in spade. Deftly maneuvering inside the man's guard, Naruto easily blocked a desperate punch. Grabbing the offending appendage and twisting it painfully, pressing his advantage, Naruto brought his right arm up while using his left to pull the iron ends downward sharply. The Chunin's arm snapped at the elbow with a satisfying crack. The man had no time to scream in pain before Naruto had kicked his legs behind the tree, knocking him off balance and grabbing the man's head and twisting it sharply. The corpse collapsed in a boneless heap and a thump as its neck was broken. Fewer than four minutes had passed since Naruto engaged the hour shinobi so Catching his breath, Naruto surveyed the battlefield, ears picking up the sound of clashing metal. Somewhat surprised at how far he had moved from his teammate, he quickly backtracked Coming within view of the fight, Naruto noted that both Genma and Raido looked the worst for wear. Genma especially, with identical nods, the two tuning dropped back to stand next to each other as they both started making hand seal. Naruto stopped, recognizing the deadly combo, and decided to hang back to watch the fireworks. He couldn't help the feeling of nervousness that gathered in the pit of his stomach as the air became heavy with chakra. This had better work. Genma finished first, and a dragon formed entirely of mud rose from the ground and charged the Iowa journey. In an ideal world, Hayato would have been there to lead off the Hayato would be there to lead off the mud river that would have unbalanced the target. Genma's mud dragon would have followed before being alert with white hot flames from Raido. If the enemy managed to survive the Naruto would be called to finish the job. The technique was golden on paper, and even better when executed properly. The world wasn't ideal, however, Raito's part of the combo was the most important. Raido never got the chance to finish his hand seals for the cut on Karyuenden, as a powerful bolt of supercharged blue lightning ripped through his body, passing through the mud dragon like it was nothing but air. Right hand, Gian! The redhead joining beat out, and snarled married the man's feature before he twisted into a grin. You kill my teammates, I kill you, trash. Fair trade, right? The Jonin mocked, and twisted satisfaction rested on his face, turning to a visage of a monster. For Naruto, time seemed to slow to a crawl as he watched the lightning rip a hole through Raido's chest. The scarred Jonin's back arched in pain as he let out a silent scream before collapsing to the ground. Bits of lightning still arced across his body as the man lay deathly still. No! No one could survive that. The blonde Chunin's mind processed two things. Raido, his friend, his comrade, and his leader was dead. And the hour Jonin was responsible. In Naruto's mind, the man's life was forfeit. Effective immediately, Naruto channeled his anger, his hatred, the rage sharpened his focus to a pinpoint as the drum beat of his heart bled in his ears. But the only thing that mattered was that that man responsible for the death of Raido ended up dead. A plan began to take shape in the young Chunin's head. Genma. He snarled as the Senpon Chunin Chunin landed next to him. I've got an idea. I'll need you to take point. Give me some space. Genma nodded once. The idea of questioning the blonde's order never crossing his mind. He would be ready to bail Naruto out if this whole thing went sideways. Charging at the Iowa Chunin who had paused to regroup after his jutsu, Genma flipped through a series of hand seals before suddenly split, spitting multiple Senpon needles at the redhead shinobi. Bringing his Zampato to bear, the short Jonin used the flat end to deflect the incoming projectiles before sp spinning and using his momentum to take a deadly swing at Jamma's neck. 
much to his shock, the strike missed entirely, and he was forced to let go of his sword in order to dodge backwards as the newly substituted Naruto's kunai made, made a stab for his heart. The man was a Jonin, however, and acquitted himself well. Reacting quickly by drawing his own kunai, the Iwanin blocked Naruto's second blade before it could pierce his liver. The man found purchase as he made grab of Naruto's chest and using his superior strength, the Jonin shoved Naruto to make some space. Naruto compiled, allowing his body to drift backwards with no resistance. The Iwa Nin flattered, losing his balance due to the unsuspected lack of resistance. It was a credit to the Jonin's reflexes that he had managed to move his head in time to avoid Naruto's thrown kunai. But his eyes were in shock as the snarling blonde disappeared, only to be replaced by the very same kunai he had just thrown. The Jonin tried to react, but he had no time, as the Kaorimi as the Kaorimu was a near instantaneous substitution. He felt nothing but a single moment of cold bite of steel. As Naruto ran the remaining knife into the back of his neck, the blonde rolled his victory and his revenge as he fell with his dead enemy. His body hit the ground with a muted thump, and he couldn't stop the faintest smile of satisfaction that blossomed when he realized that he'd avenge his friend. The smile remained until darkness claimed him. Naruto was in pain and he had no one but to blame himself. It was all necessary, he kept telling himself. And while his mantra was true, he couldn't help but wonder if there hadn't been another way to go about it at all. Preferably a way that hadn't left him in the hospital with his chakra caused damage. The Shanshin, despite common misconception, was not a teleportation jutsu. It was a speed technique, though that didn't make it any less simple. Many though thought that the technique should be learned by all academy students, young Jin in especially, as it couldn't hurt. But there were very specific reasons why it wasn't. Similar to a Kawarimi in nature, the Shanshin required C rank con chakra control, lest the user end up a greasy smear on the ground when the pent up chakra speeding his movement exploded outward, instead of remaining controlled. The Jutsu allowed for a quick, nearly insane burst of speed over a short distance and shorter duration due to the use of chakra to power the legs in order to move at speeds almost faster than the, the eye could track. It was this build up of chakra that made the Shanshini effective as a Jutsu, but very dangerous and stupid to use in most common combat situations. The combat build up had to escape somewhere and that spot was usually from the user's body at the beginning or the end of the run. The discharge made it possible for just about any competent shinobi to estimate both the direction and destination of the user. The glaring limitation was that the discharged chakra had to go somewhere, and this somewhere was usually the closest object that could observe chakra. The shinobi who had just performed the technique, this caused the escape chakra to slam back into the shinobi's chakra cord, a process that was abnormal and could be painful if too much. The chakra release and absorption put a great amount of strain of the, on the body, as the body was used to having a certain balance of chakra at all times. The heavy concentration of chakra moving in and out of the body could render serious damage to the leg muscles. If used too frequently or in too quick a succession, it was for this reason that the use of the celestial gates was classified as forbidden, as the discharge chakra affected the user's entire body causing massive damage. It was because of this limit it was because of these limitations that Shinobi like the Shanshin no Shisui and the Yellow Flash were rec were recognized as masters of the Shanshin, the Yodame in particular. The Yodame is the fourth Hokage for those who do not know. They had managed to create and use a modified version of the technique to make it combat effective. Similarly to the Kaorimi used to chakra to latch onto an object and bring it toward the user, while simultaneously propelling the user to the spot that the object had previously occupied in a magnetic proportional effect. As the chakra cooled and would mostly be concentrated on the other object, the technique required far less chakra control than the shanshin, as the user didn't have to worry about much excess chakra being built up, discharged and then slamming back into the user's chakra cord. But there was still some left over and the chakra still had to go somewhere. It was for this reason that shinobi substituted with objects of both organic material 
and similar size to them. The organic matter would automatically absorb most of the chakra of the user and the wood. And the more matter there was, the less excess chakra there would be concentrated on the user, able to slam back into them. When Naoto Kaori made with his throne kunai, he was substituting with an object both significantly smaller than himself and made of metal. As things stood, Naoto had felt every single partic particle of chakra as it slammed back into his coil, and was still feeling it now. Chakra coils took a while to recover properly if he wanted to use them again in the future. And Naoto found to his chagrin that he needed to be in the hospital for that to happen. Hospital feud, he mused, most likely from one of the gluttonous substances that were simply doctored up to look up like, to look like real food. It was the only explanation that he could think of why everything on his plate tasted exactly the same and it didn't taste good. At least Mizuki managed to sneak me some ramen. Unfortunately for the bedridden tuning, the budget for the academy instructor wasn't all that much, compounded by the fact that he was living with, with his girlfriend, creating double the living expenses. The man had very little money to spend on frivolous things such as ramen, or at least that was the way the silver head man put it. Not to even think the excuse quite cut it. The man had gotten him one extra large bowl, just one. That was one meal. That would only last 25 minutes tops. He still had a few days in this hellhole. That was no way to treat your injured and bedridden friend, at least not in Naruto's mind. Naruto's musing about the unfairness of it all were cut short by the voice of, it, of the aforementioned man. <laughs> Facing Naruto and looking through the window, that gave Naruto a good view of the Hokage monument. I still had to believe, you know. I mean, I didn't run too many missions with that guy, but by all accounts he was good. Damn good. Naruto nodded solemnly from the place he of his hospital bed. His emotions were still running high after Raido's death. Yeah, I know what you mean. He was the best of us all. Moto shook his head. No, he was careful. He had no warning, no indication that anything was coming. No time to react. He would have needed reflexes and speed like the Yodan to get out of the way. Moto's gaze turned upwards. Eyes losing focus as they took in the pure white ceiling of his room in Konoha Shinobi Medical Center. He was outmatched. We all were. Civilians closed, rustled as Mizuki turned around to face the blonde. An unreadable expression rested on the academy's teacher's face. You killed him though, in the end. Naruto merely shrugged. He could truly say that no, he could truly say that he really didn't care about having killed that man. One week after the battle, Naruto merely wished to forget the whole thing. You ever find out who he was? Naruto nodded, eyes coming back into focus. Masahashi Shibito, joining from Mizuki blanched at the name. Mizuki blanched at the name. Damn! Naruto, do you even know who that is? At Naruto's blank look, he elaborated. He's an A-ranked shinobi. He's an A-ranked. Was an A-ranked. He fought during the Great War. Naruto raised an eyebrow, genuinely surprised. Janma had stopped by to tell him who it was that exactly had given them so much trouble, but he hadn't mentioned this. Whole squad, God, whole squad, God, Naruto, you have no idea what you did, do you? At Mizuki's incredulous look, Naruto allowed a small smile to slip onto his face. It was more for his friend's benefit that because of any real pride. Apparently, I killed some A rank badass. At the continued incredul incre at the continued incredulity, now complete with hand of him now complete with hand motion, Naruto snickered to himself. Mizuki was really funny, too funny. He was glad to call the man his friend though. He managed to cheer him up when no one else could, or even bother to. No, not just him, his whole squad. Damn. Naruto, if you keep this up, you'll be in the Yonbu in no time. The silver head chun shook his head in disbelief. Hell, they'll come looking for you. Naruto shot, blushing slightly at the praise. I had help. I wouldn't have been able to kill two of them if Janma and Raido hadn't been there. His voice cracked slightly on the name of his former captain. It was a team effort. 
I was just the one who got the kill shot. Whatever. Don't play it as much as you want. The fact that you still kill them. You, not Genma, not Raido, shaking his head in amusement. The tuning plopped down into a the tuning plopped down in a chair that was adjacent adjacent to Naruto's bed, taking a sip from a glass of water. Man, I would be surprised if the Anbu didn't pay you a visit in the next couple of days. He idly took another sip. They already did. The statement had the oh so satisfying effect of causing Mizuki to spit out the water. A rap stopped by yesterday, Naruto finished, in between chuckles. Perfect timing, he thought. Oh really? Mizuki had regained his composure. What little there yeah. What little there had been to begin with anyway. A deadpan expression rested on his face. What he say? Nothing much. Just they were interested. Just they were interested. Had looked at my file. Mission records the the like. Though I thought I had potential. though I had potential, he said. Naruto blew a strand of blood hair out of his eyes. It really was getting long. You know how it is. No, Naruto. I most certainly do not know how it is. The guy say anything else? Mizuki asked dryly. His incredulity was warranted. Anbo was the most secret shinobi unit in Konoha, and they don't often recruit openly, especially with people as young as Naruto. The after effects of Uchiha and Tachi's betrayal still hung heavy in the black ops. If Naruto fell through and became Anbu, he would be the second youngest in over a decade. Just that it would probably take six months to process my application if I decided to join, that is. Naruto said with a straight face. He casually bathed his nails on his hospital gown. The blonde felt a smile threaten to split his face in two as he saw Mizuki's eyes widen to the size of dinner plates. Six months? You do know that shaving off a year of normal processing time. Yep. Mizuki shook his head, throwing his arms skyward in frustration. Of course you know, you cocky little bastard. You really think you're hot shit, don't you? Naruto smirked devilishly. Little bit. That's it, I'm outta here. Let's see how you like not getting any ramen tomorrow. Mizuki picked up his jacket from the chair and started to walk towards the door, shaking his head at Naruto all along. Oh dear, I do hope I'm not intruding. Naruto and Mizuki spun toward the door, eyes running as they took in the elderly form of the sidearm Hokage, decked out in his traditional Hokage robes and hat. Mizuki composed himself quickly and addressed the shinobi no Kami respectfully. Not at all, Hokage-san. I was just leaving. Well then, my boy, don't let me keep you. The old man gave the chunin a grandfatherly smile. As, Muzi as Mizuki sped out the room, Shooting Naruto wide-eyed looks the whole way, the elderly shinobi stepped fully into the room, followed closely by the middle-aged blonde man with a ponytail who spotted a crispy flag vest. Alas, Uzumaki-kan, I'm afraid that will require a few moments of your time. Naruto sighed heavily, pinching the bridge of his nose in order to stave off the ensuing headache. He had expected to be debriefed. It was standard, pr it was standard procedure after a mission like this. He just didn't expect it to be the Hokage and Konoha's fist fire blade during the debriefing. The fist fire blade, also known as the High Jonin, was appointed by the Hokage in order to better manage the shinobi populace. The Hokage could, the Hokage could hardly micromanage the whole shinobi force. The fire blade Yamanaka Inoichi headed the Jonin Council and the ranked third on the totem pole in terms of highest ranking ninja. He was behind the armed commander. A reclusive figure, if there ever was, and the Hokage himself, in terms of raw po political power in the village. It was a system that had been set up by Senji Tobirama, the Nidaim Hokage, so that the village could probably ma be managed in all times of crisis. If the Hokage sitting, if the sitting Hokage was unduly occupied or indisposed, it also established the chain of command. If the Hokage was killed before the he could appoint a successor. The first fire blade would assume control of the Konoha's military, while the advisory council would control the civilian matters until a proper replacement could be found. Hyuga Hiyashi, the fire blade at the time of the QB attack, had held control over the Konoha Shinobi force for all of three hours before Sarutubi had been reinstated. 
given the importance of the two men sitting at the foot of his bed, Naruto could only assume that he and his team had stumbled onto something big. Mission clusterfucks like this didn't normally cause enough concern for the Hokage and his high and his and his ranking journey to get involved. Checks out, it's the same version of events that Shiranu told us, Hokage Sam. The high journey finished, wrenching the blonde from his musing. The Hokage nodded solemnly, eyes firmly locked on the Hokage monument out of the window. He appeared too deep in thought, turning from the his turning from the view, his eyes found the sitting form of Naruto. Tell me, Naruto Khan, did you notice anything abnormal about your encounter with the Iwa Shinobi? The Saiyan asked. The Saiyan may ask. Naruto took the question as permission to speak freely. Aside from the obvious, the fact that they were there. Aside from the obvious, the fact that they were there in the first place. It was a rhetoric. It was a rhetoric. Because it was a rhetorical question, but the Hokage nodded nonetheless. It seemed like a case of really bad luck at first. Kurosugi had money on his head. It's not out of the question to think that someone, even another village, would be after him. The Hokage nodded, accepting the point. But, where Shinobi, there's no such thing as bad luck, only misinformation. Now to continue, the concerns he had been stewing over for the past week finally coming to the fore. But it still makes no sense. The money on Kurosugi's, the money on Kurosugi shouldn't be enough to attract Awa's attention anyway. And even if it was, the bounty shouldn't, be, the bounty shouldn't have been enough for them to send a full kill squad into a river country, a place that is under joint jurisdiction of both Kunoha and Suna. The boy shrugged his shoulders, having expressed his concern. The Hokage nodded with a small smile, settling on his face at the young shinobi's deduction skills. Not to lean back, eyes closing, as he recalled every small detail of the encounter. Unbidden, the words of his almost sensei came to the fore. A shinobi always seek to look underneath the underneath. Eyes flying open, thoughts connecting in his brain as previously disjointed bits of information formed a coercive whole. Not to address the Hokage once more. They were waiting for us. The answer was so obvious and so ludicrous that Naruto had overlooked it completely in his reflection. The Saidame who had the Saidame, the Saidame who had been having a whispered conversation with Inouichi turned to Naruto, turned his head to Naruto. Elaborate, Sarutobi said seriously. They were waiting. They had to be. There was no surprise when they found us. The village was torn apart, but it looked like it had been like that for some time at least. Killing Kurosuke wouldn't have taken them that long. They had no reason to still be there when we showed up. The follow-up, but why, was left unsaid in the wake of the boy's rent. The Hokage nodded, looking to Inuichi, who had a look of surprise edge upon his visage. Indeed, hokage Sama, the boy is perceptive. Turning to face Naruto, he continued. That is the same conclusion that we have drawn, Uzumaki-sen. The question remains, why? Why would an Iowa kill squad be in river country? Why would they be waiting to ambush a team of Konoha Chuni? The answers have been... The answers have some disturbing implications, the Hokage said. Blonde eyebrows shot up and Naruto's eyes widened as the thoughts connected. You think this was a deliberate you think this was a deliberate act of war? The alarm was clear in his voice as a muted sort of terror gripped him. Instead of answering, the sudden turned to the window once more, serving the stone faces of their predecessor and successors. Indeed, my boy. You must be curious as to both why Inouichi Khan and myself are here debriefing you. The question was rhetorical, but Naruto nodded anyway. It didn't make much sense as to why such high-ranking shinobi were here to debrief him, of all people. While the information that you and your team inevitably helped us uncover is a bit above your pay grade, I have it on good authority that may be exchanging. I, I have it on good authority that may be changing soon. The Saiyan's face was expressionless, not allowing Naruto to get a read on the man. Naruto's mind immediately flashed to the offer the Anbu representative. He had said his name was Tenzo, he had made him. How does he know about that? It was only yesterday. The thought only barely crossed his mind before he mentally slapped himself. Anbu was under the direct jurisdiction of the Hokage. It would have been a shock if the man didn't know. 
Hell, Naruto thought the Hokage probably approved that decision to recruit me. The question was why? You'll find, Naruto Khan. The sudden began, shaking Naruto from his thought, that I've got quite the eye for talent. His lips twitched in amusement as Naruto's eyes widened. Call it a hunch, but I have a feeling that you may be an important asset to the village one day. I'm simply helping the process along. It wouldn't be the first time. As Naruto, as flawed as he was by the Sandam's apparent faith in his abilities, Naruto couldn't help but be skeptical. Naruto couldn't help but be skeptical. Me? I'm nobody. Often clanless, the boiled trade off truly had a loss as to why the Sandam would show so much interest in him. He was talented, he knew that, but surely there were others. Faith like the Sandam was showing in his abilities wasn't developed simply by reading over his mission reports, no matter how impressive they might have been. And it's not just like he was taking s rank missions either, just standard C and b rank jobs. No, the kind of interest the Hokage was showing in him could be only developed over time, as if the man had been following his whole career from the day he entered the Ninja Academy. But that was preposterous, as were many exceptional shinobi, the Sandam the side said, and truly unnerving twinkle in his eyes. Minato came to his mind, and not even he showed as much talent at your age. Naruto sat back. He was flawed, that was for sure. No one has showed so no one has showed such faith in both his skills and his talent before. No pressure, Naruto. Yeah, right? In any event, I'm always looking for fresh new opinions. They often give perspective on certain angles that old men like me don't see. Your perspective on the matter, having been directly involved more so than anyone else, may help us understand our precarious position a little better. The professor looked at Naruto expectantly, as if he honestly thought the boy might refuse to lend his opinion. At Naruto's unnecessary nod of compliance, he turned to the formerly silent member of the trio, Inoichi, if you will. Of course, Okai-san. Turning to Naruto, he began. As you are aware, information is the backbone of a mission's success. A misinformed shinobi is a dead shinobi. Naruto bobbed his head at the old adage. It was drilled into all academy students. As you are most likely not aware, the fiasco, he took a moment to find an adequate word. That was your mission was not the first instant of a Konoha team being ambushed. There have been a total of three other examples of Konoha's team being caught off guard by our shinobi though none quite as blatant as yours. In each case, there has been at least one Konoha survivor, and in each case, the evidence was such that it was easy to believe that the Konoha teams were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. Until now, not so finished. The blonde Yamanaka nodded. Until now. Until this point, these small incidents have been happening on neutral ground, in grass country to be specific. This grass is bordered by both fire country and earth country. It was easier to believe that squads from the both villages might encounter one another, though it was still a bit of a stretch. But for it to happen in river country, it's too convenient, too blatant. Naruto finished for him, eyes widening as comprehension dawned, and everyone knows that there are no coincidences in this job. Indeed, Naruto can. The Sidam the side of me agreed. Nah, I'm just gonna start calling him the third Okage. Indeed, Naruto Khan. The third Okage agreed grimly. You think they're provoking us? Naruto asked. Okage sama, if I may. The, the third Okage nodded. I was, I was never been all that subtle. They hate, they hate us. But a full kill squad in River Country after the same target as the Konoha team? Naruto shook his head. It's a little too bold, even for them. Yes, it does. The Okage agreed with a grim smile. It looked more like a grimace on the aged Hokage's face, in which he picked up once more. We were fully prepared to believe Iowa was provoking us into conflict until this last maneuver. Iowa's feelings for Konoha aside, they are a shinobi village governed by old shinobi ideals. The Sushi Kage, the Sushi Kage would never condone such an attack unless his forces were fully mobilized for war. It defies all, it defies all logic otherwise. Naruto's eyes widened as he suppressed the gasp as a second, far more horrifying conclusion came drawn in his head. You think someone is manipulating Iowa, pushing them towards conflict with us? The question that wasn't a question drew only grim faces. 
yeah. time scale. It definitely didn't go as planned, but we should be able to make do. Yeah, the spectral form of a man said. Huh. It might turn out even better. The man whom he was addressing stood ramrod, straight grey ringed eyes peering intently at the rainbow colored form. Elaborate was his simple command. Shibuto was a good soldier. He was an old timer, old school, and one of the old Sushikali's favorite. The figure paused, chuckling to himself. When the news came down, I was surprised that the old man didn't declare war on Konoha right then and there, yeah? Even in his old age, the Sushikage remained shrewd. He was never prone to rash decisions. It is doubtful he will begin now, the grey-eyed figure stated, idly adjusting his black cloak with red clouds. The voice wasn't quite monotone. It merely lacked infection. infection. It never ceased to unnerve the rainbow-colored figure. Yeah, well... It should speed the process along a bit. The old man's getting agitated, not to mention what the rest of the shinobi think. Yeah, a full kill team taken out, a full kill team taken down by a few tuning. The whole corps is talking about it. The figure shook his head. Where is some bread? Where is some bread? Got all the kills. It's got them on edge. They're anxious. Yeah. The grey-eyed figure nodded, as they should be. This turn, while unexpected has the potential to help expedite our operation. How go the inroads in Kusagakura? The spectre appeared caught off guard at the sudden change in topic, but composed himself quickly. Better than expected, but it's still long but it's still a long ways off. The figure shrugged. Even then it'll take something big to convince the hardliners to change. Konoha has been one of the best allies. Kusa's support of Iwa is paramount, the cloaked figure insisted. With a village so close to Konoha, supporting Iowa while on the brink of war, Konoha will be forced into early action, drawing their attention from us. The spectral figure nodded. Understood, yeah. Understood, yeah. It's just tough trying to work with the pro Konohans. Getting them sworn into secrecy about the whole deal was hard enough. An incident will be arranged. As you seem to think it's Rukai. Keep the pressure on Kusa for now and off Konoha. We don't we don't need them asking unnecessary questions before we get too careless. You think really? You really think that they might deduce our existence? That seems a little bit far fetched, yeah? The cloak man couldn't see the expression on the face of his subordinate, but he assumed that the man had a questioning look but he assumed the man had a questioning look on his face at least from his response. The great-eyed man shook his head. The Saidam has always been intelligent. That has not been, that has not changed in his later years. He also has a knack for surrounding himself with similarly intelligent people. Provoking Konoha any further will serve no visible purpose. While making it easier for the Hokage to become aware of us, the rainbow, the rainbow colored figure nodded. Understood. You are dismissed. With a small hand gesture, the spectral figure disappeared from his sight, and the cloaked man allowed the jutsu to end. The conflict with Konoha and Iwa is on schedule then. A voice spoke from behind, the grey-eyed man. Ahead of schedule, if the error is to be believed. The man turned to address a similarly cloaked figure who wore an orange mask on his face. The unexpected turn events may turn out to benefit us greatly, though that one leaf name, Uzumaki Naruto, Bears some watching. The masked man nodded. The rest of the blasted clan was certainly trouble. I said it touched to watch him. He's on QB duty anyway. He'll be in position to eliminate the boy if necessary. The masked man asked. The masked man turned to face the ring eyed man. What about Kusa? You said it yourself, Pain. The alliance with Iowa the alliance with Iowa is crucial in starting this war. Konoha will act in a way that will perceive as an act of war. Pain nodded, and they will. I already have a plan in motion. If all goes as it should, tensions should be at the breaking point within two months, and the war within two years. The masked man kept his gaze upon Pain for a moment before nodding in acceptance of the statement. Good. The teams should be good. The team should be able to start moving freely toward the Biju at the same time. Then, you will have to assemble them soon.
it will be done good turning to the door to exit the man paused i have to wonder how exactly you intend to force kunoa into action you said it yourself the silent the third okage is an intelligent man with intelligent advisors he will not act rashly especially against an ally i've long since infiltrated my old sensei's network placing misinformation that will force konoha to act won't be difficult he could see behind the mask but pain was sure that the man had raised an eyebrow in question oh and when konoha investigates why they received false information from their most trusted source what then konoha doesn't know who exists with that in mind their attention will focus on the only other logical conclusion the man the masked man nodded with a chuckle orochimaru hmm i suppose that is i suppose that it was good thing i convinced you not to kill him after all pay nodded indeed our old ally will make himself useful once more the man in the mask chuckled once more before regaining his composure very good run with it for now it looks like my allowing you to run the show may yield result hopefully your running of a moon interfere with akatsuki's plans i would hate to have it i would hate to have to take over for you for the first time that day an emotional made its way into pain's voice irritation you know what i'm capable of madara nothing will interfere with akatsuki let's keep it that way shall we the masked man asked as it disappeared in a swirl pain waited a moment making sure that he couldn't feel the ancient uchiha's chakra anywhere in him before he relaxed. The Rinnegan user reflected on the shady organization's progress. Their agents were in a high-ranking position in their respective villages. Their, their assets would soon be able to move freely without interference from the hidden villages. From there, the hidden villages would be easy pickings for the Akatsuki. Even with the large progress the group made, he grew wary of the plans within plans. The circles within circles, just like his eyes, the eyes of God. It was at times like this when he missed his old friend the most, Yahiko, would have reminded him that this was all necessary. He contented himself with the knowledge that Akatsuki would soon be the power in the elemental nations. Things as they were were moving quite well, all things considered. If only he could find Hanzo's blessed salamander contract, his mind would be put at ease. Killing the living legend had been difficult, even for him. He didn't need any new Salamander summoners springing up from the cracks of the shinobi world. Swiveling in his chair, his ringed eyes survey, it aims industrial skyline. Soon Akatsuki would rule the shinobi world, and he could finally dispose of Madara. Soon there would be peace. And soon, soon there would be peace. Soon, everybody. And soon there would be peace. Well, that's the end. What does the future hold for Naruto? Will he be able to survive the upcoming storm that's up ahead? What change will the involvement of the Akatsuki bring forth? Will it be a good change for the world or will it lead the world into a dark path that many won't survive? Well, find out next time on Rooster's What Ifs.